hello friends uh, we are uh, going to say create a new channel by uh, say vidas scheme academy and the main aim behind the creation of this channel is that to prepare the student for state eligibility test conducted by the savitribai phule pune university pune in chemical science so along with that uh, we are also say make a video lecture on some basic concepts related to the state eligibility test so now in this uh, present lecture we are going to discuss about the catalyst okay so friends you already know that the catalyst is nothing but the substance which alter the rate of reaction okay and here we are mainly focus over what say the activation energy because say the catalyst which affect on the activation energy here we have one diagram so with the help of this diagram we are going to understand what why or how this catalyst will going to work so this is what say the reactant it is just an a simply say the diagram which is plotted in between the reaction progress and say the energy so this is what say the reactants which having the less energy and this is nothing but set with the product which having the higher energy so obviously this reaction is nothing but the endothermic reaction okay and we have seen two types of graphs so this graphs it with uh, say the catalyst and this one is nothing but the without catalyst so whenever we are going to use the catalyst so this catalyst will going to lower down the activation energy and that's why the speed of the reaction will going to increase so uh, on that basis we are going to say uh, categorize the catalyst Uh, so we uh, say say that uh, types of the catalyst so the first one is nothing but the positive catalyst so the positive catalyst is nothing but the substance which increases the rate of reaction so that's why it is called as what positive catalyst next is nothing but the negative catalyst as it name suggests that it can decreases the rate of reaction sometimes uh, say in some reactions the product itself acts as a catalyst so it can be referred as the auto catalyst and lastly whenever we have to stop the reaction so we are going to use the substance which are going to stop the reaction so that substance is called as the poisonous catalyst so the catalyst is having the uh, say the major role in the chemical reaction so that's why it is a uh, say the important topic so next say two types of uh, reactions uh, majorly seen in say the chemistry uh, say that the homogeneous catalysis and another is nothing but the heterogeneous catalysis so we try to understand what do you mean by uh, say the homogeneous as well as the heterogeneous catalysis so suppose if we say consider any reactions where we take uh, say the reactant then reagent they will going to combine okay and finally we got the, the product okay so this is what say the straightforward reaction so whenever the reactant and reagents are present in same phase so that uh, catalysis is called as the homogeneous catalysis homo means same so whenever the reactant and reagents are present in the same phase so that's why they are called as the homogeneous catalysis conversely what happen when say the reactant and reagents they are present in the different means what suppose the reactant will be present in the solid state and the reagent will be present in the liquid state so and such example is uh, nothing but said to be the heterogeneous catalysis so majorly we have seen say the two types of catalysts and we are more interested in the homogeneous catalysis so now here we say consider or you can say that uh, take two reactions hydroformylation reaction and an wecker process so the characteristics of both reaction is that so we got the aldehyde is nothing but the product in both reaction but the different is that so difference is nothing but in hydroformylation reaction so whatever the aldehyde we got so they contain one more carbon atom as compared to the reactant and in wecker process we got say the aldehyde which having the same number of carbon atom as compared to say or uh, say the reactant so now we move towards the hydroformylation reaction it is also referred as the oxo process and can be used for the synthesis of uh, aldehyde in industrial process from alkene so we have seen here say the simple reaction uh, here we can take what say the alkene then in 
say the carbon monoxide and in presence of the H2 and here we can write down what say the catalyst so the catalyst is nothing but dicobalt octacarbonyl is nothing but the catalyst we will uh, consider in this reaction along with that one more catalyst will be uh, used over here but uh, we still uh, we are going to say discuss this dicobalt octacarbonyl and when we use that catalyst uh, in this reaction so we got two types of aldehyde so it depend upon the nature of the alkene suppose if we take the symmetrical alkene so we got only one product if we take the unsymmetrical alkene so we got say the two product means the aldehydic group will be produced over say the primary as well as say the secondary carbon atoms so we got the two products here in present example the alkene is unsymmetrical alkene so that's why we got two products so now we move towards what say the mechanism of this hydro formulation reaction so the first step of the mechanism is that so this is what our catalyst it is nothing but the dicobalt octacarbonyl okay so when we add h2 or say when we do the hydrogenation of this catalyst so that catalyst will cut in into the two parts and we got say uh, say the tetra carbonyl hydrate o cobalt so this is nothing but the product uh, say form after the hydrogenation of the dicobalt octacarbonyl complex so uh, say it is just and say the insertion of the h2 molecule in between the cobalt cobalt bond so this is said to be the metal metal bond which is present in the dicobalt octacarbonyl and when we add say the h2 molecule in them so we got what say the tetra carbonyl hydrate cobalt as a product then so that uh, tetra carbonyl hydrate of cobalt can be used so it is an 18 electron species so after the elimination of the carbonyl group one carbonyl group so we got the 16 electron species complex so as shown over here and then in next step what happen so our alkene should be added across it okay so whenever the alkene will be added across it so we know that the carbonyl or you can say that the carbonyl they are not, nothing but the ligands which are attached to the cobalt and one hydrogen will be present over the cobalt but what happened the cobalt is nothing but the metals which possess two types of orbitals so they may possess say the field orbitals which having electrons as well as they may contain the vacant orbital okay and here when we reacted such type of complex with alkene so the alkene is having the double bond means the pi electrons so they can be you can say that uh, say attack into the vacant orbital of the cobalt and can form a bond which are uh, say called as what say the pi complex as we already explained in the organometallic chemistry so here we got the complex where the cobalt is having the pi complex with what say the alkene as shown over here which is an 18 electron species then after what happened the hydrogen will going to say inserted in between the carbon carbon or you can say that the over carbon and this carbon will going to attach to the cobalt by means of the sigma bond and we got what say the 16 electron species so after that say the cobalt in the cobalt one carbonyl atom will get added that's why say the total electrons are present in this complex is nothing but the 18 electron and then after so that carbonyl will going to insert it in between the cobalt and carbon bond so we got the resultant uh, say the complex and then in last step the addition of the h2 molecule will be carried out and finally we got what say our product that is nothing but the aldehyde and say the same catalyst can be eliminated at the end of the reaction so this is nothing but said to be the hydro formulation reaction so uh, we have say uh, some steps okay some important steps we have to remember that the first step is nothing but the addition of the h2 into the dicobalt octacarbonyl we got what is the tetra carbonyl hydrate of cobalt then there is elimination of the co molecule okay then there is addition of the alkene okay carbon double bond carbon okay ch2 double bond ch2 then third is nothing but said to be the insertion of what say or say the addition of the carbon monoxide okay then next step the insertion of the carbon monoxide in between the cobalt and the carbon atom 
okay and then finally there is the addition of the h2 so okay so these are nothing but the main step regarding the hydro formulation reaction <coughs> you must have to know that step so you are easily uh, able to write down the mechanism of this reaction and finally we get what say the aldehyde as a product so the next reaction is the wacker process okay and this reaction also say <coughs> result say the aldehyde uh, as that of the hydro formulation process but the difference in between these uh, two reaction is that see here we have seen say the hydro formulation reaction suppose if we use the symmetrical alkene so what we got we got say uh, say the aldehyde but the product which having one more carbon atom as compared to the reactant but in case of the wacker process but in case of the wacker process say the product which having the same number of carbon atoms as that of what uh, say the reactant Okay, so this is nothing but say the difference in between the hydro formulation and wacker process so you must have to uh, know that difference so now we move towards what say the wacker process so the wacker process uh, say say here we have say the standard reaction so here we have say the c8 h18 this is nothing but a straight chain you do you just uh, say consider the simple alkene and there is a use of what say the pdcl2 and cucl and O2 is there in the reaction is carried out in the DMF and H2O so you don't uh, say worry about that all these things said that DMF and H2O okay so you just have to know that that reaction will be carried out in the sense of PDCl2 CECl2 okay and what we got we got what say the aldehyde as a product okay so see <coughs> here so the mechanism of this reaction is much simple as compared to say the hydro formulation reaction so here is nothing but said to be the pd so now see uh, these are nothing but said to be the two metals so the pd and cu so these metals are always present in say uh, they can form you can say that uh, say the square planar complexes always so suppose the pdcl4 is in square planar complex cucl4 is in square planar complex and which carrying the two negative charge okay because the metal uh, means the pd will be present in the diapositive state and the cu will be present in the diapositive state okay so that's why their complex they, they may carry say the two negative charge and they their geometry must be the square planar geometry okay they don't uh, have say the tetrahedral geometry so you must have to remember these things okay so now we move towards the mechanism the first thing is nothing but said to be the pd okay which having say the square planar geometry as i already told you okay so when we add what say the alkene into it so the one cl will going to replace and there is a formation of the pi complex in between the pd and the carbon carbon double bond okay so we already talk about the pi complex <coughs> means that uh, metal ion the vacant orbital of the metal ion will uh, in interaction with what say the pi electron of the carbon carbon double bond then in next step there is an addition of the h2 molecule will take place okay so when the h2 molecule will going to add so the one cl will going to replace okay and the h2 molecule will going to add in the next step the second h2 molecule will be added so see here so when we add say the h2 molecule here and in next step we are going to add the second h2 molecule so that molecule will going to act as a base and they will going to remove the proton from say uh, the h2 molecule which is already present in the complex okay and there is the elimination of the minus h3 positive ion which is seen over here okay and what we got we got say the complex here in complex we got say the oh negative ions okay then the next step is nothing but the isomerization so you know that what what is isomerization where the <coughs> say the molecular formula of the reactant product are same so such type of reaction is called as the isomerization reaction so here say uh, this OH which is anti with respect to that uh, say the carbon carbon double bond so in this isomerization reaction this, that OH will going to change their position and which is seen with respect to that carbon carbon double bond okay and that's why such type of product we got after the isomerization steps okay then after what happened in last step that OH negative will going to attack over the carbon uh, atom of the alkene okay and then we got what say the product so in product we got say the pd in the zero oxidation state then the cl then scl and then say the aldehyde okay means uh, acetaldehyde the product we got why because we will take say the ethylene as a reactant and then finally say the pd will be obtained at the end of the reaction the pd will be obtained in the zero oxygen state so when did that pd will going to react it with the cucl4 dinegative so we will take the two molecules of that 
okay so that molecule will into oxidize that pd into the pdcl4 dinegative means at the beginning of the reactions we are using that pdcl4 dinegative as the catalyst and that uh, catalyst can do the oxidation of the alkene into the aldehyde and at the end of the reaction that pd will say eliminated as say the pd or okay at pd is zero oxygen state but that cucl4 they can further oxidize that pd into the pd cl4 dinegative so that that cucl4 will acts as a co-oxidant okay it is called as a co-oxidant so what is co-oxidant co-oxidant is nothing but said to be the substance which can oxidizes the catalyst again and again so that that pd cl4 will be used further okay so this is all about what say the vacker process so i will going to remind that okay so in first step what happen there is a addition of the alkene there is a formation of the pi complex okay first thing then in second step there is a addition of the h2 molecule okay then third step there is a addition of the second h2 molecules will act as a base and which can remove the proton from say the h2 which is initially present in complex and there is a elimination of the h3 positive which is shown in say uh, in this ppd okay then third third step is nothing but the isomerizations where the oh negative will change their position okay means uh, initially it is trans with respect to the carbon carbon double bond and after the reaction after the isomerization reaction it is seen okay so this is nothing but said to be the isomerization step and the final step is nothing but the oh will going to attack over say the carbon atom of the carbon carbon double bond and finally we got say the product aldehyde or acetaldehyde as a product and whatever say the pd we got in zero oxygen state so that can be oxidized by means of the cu cl4 dinegative and finally we got say the pd cl4 dinegative which can be further say acts as a catalyst and say oxidizes the other molecule of the ethylene okay so this is all about what say the vacker process so thank you this is all about this lecture hello friends uh, we are uh, going to say create a new channel by Uh, say Vedas Scheme Academy, and the main aim behind the creation of this channel is that to prepare the student for state eligibility test conducted by the Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University, Pune, in Kimi 